Hello, in today's Omar Vision tutorial, I was going to go play around and look at the asset store and uh, look for some cool assets that maybe I could use. So here I'm going to go and, what am I saying add for? I'm going to make a new 3D project and I'm going to look for a city that I could make a car to drive around in. So I'll call this like City Drive. Okay, and I'll say Create. Then the project is created and now I'm going to go look up in the asset store for something I could drive around in a city. And I don't want it to be too big, so let's see. Let's see what kind of cities they have for search. And then let's see what they have that's free. Um, here, here's one that I downloaded before. Let me use this one again. This one's pretty cool. It's a voxel city. And that's cool because then it'll match up with my voxel car. So let me import that into my project. Okay. And... All right, so you know just where I got the city from. And probably here in the voxel, city voxel pack, they probably have a demo scene. Okay, so let me go back to my scene view and let me load up the demo scene, which is the city. Ooh, it looks nice. It looks pretty nice. I could do something with this. All right, and let's just, where should I focus in on? Oh, let's just focus right here. Okay. So now, um, if I'm going to have a car to drive around in, I'm going to have to have a car. So let me go into my Magical Voxel. And I know I've built some cars before in Magical Voxel. We know it's cool. Um, so let's see what I could load up here. Chevy Blue. And this is a cool car that I kind of made in Magical Voxel. I think it's cool. And I think the colors kind of match the city. So let me export this car that I built in Magical Voxel as an OBJ, and let me pick the folder that my Unity project is. So, let's see, Unity, City Drive, and the Assets. Um, I know the OBJ has three files that it makes, so let me just make a folder here, Magica, Voxel, and then I'll just throw the file in here. Save. Okay, so I'm done with that. And then here in my Assets here is the Magica Voxel folder with the car. So let's see, let me drag and drop the car into this uh, scene. And yeah, the magical voxel scaling is much, is way off from these models, but that's fine. So here's the car. Now it has a little triangle here, so that means there's a sub object. And the sub object is probably where the car mesh is actually. Yep, it's a mesh, skin mesh here. And what I want to do is scale the model down, not my Chevy Blue. I want that to stay at 111 just for simplicity. You know? Oh, my dog's looking at me. He wants me to take him for a ride in a car. You want to go on the ride in a car? All right, just a minute. So I'm going to scale down the car model till it matches up to my scene a little better. And now it's floating in the air. Let me bring it. Now let me select the, the upper level car, the top level, and bring that down. And let's see if that matches up to the road better until it matches in size. And I think that's too big still, so let me make it a little smaller. So wee -de -bee -de -bee -de -bee -de -bee. You know, usually got space. Whoa, why is that? I clicked the wrong thing. All right. <laughs> so let's, I think that that car size is about right. Now let me just lift it up from the ground. Does that look like a car size that matches people coming out these doors? I guess so. All right, so that'll be my car size. So remember, I went inside and I changed this from Magical Voxel, made it get smaller. And make sure that the model has offset of 0, 0, 0, rotation 0, 0, 0. It's just the scale that I changed. And then the top level, which is just a transform, I'm going to add a rigid body to it. And I'm adding a rigid body so that I can move my car around using physics. So let me give the car a, an imaginary mass of, like, say, oh, this car weighs, like, I don't know, 1,200 pounds. Okay, doesn't really make difference. Just didn't want it to be one. And then I'm going to have to give a script to the car. So let me add a script. Let me just do it over here. Create a new script. C sharp script, and I'll call it car control. Do -do -do -do. And I could drag and drop that on the car. All right, let's make the script for the car. So I'm going to go in here and open up that new script I just created. Let me just take this out, because, um, and I always get this out over here. Bam. And let's see, from in the inspector window, we'll give the user a chance to play around with the, the move speed of the car, which I will set by default to 25. And then I'm going to say, 
give the user a chance to play around with the turn speed of the car, which uh, I'm going to set by default to 0.8. And then I need the rigid body, public rigid body RB. I need the rigid body. Okay, and then in the so let's just save that first, and I'll define those. Let me see. Go back to Unity here. So the rigid body, I need it, so let me just drag and drop that there. Boop. Okay, that's good. Now, since this, I'm going to move the car using physics. I'm going to move the car using its rigid body. I'm going to use the um, model behavior method of fixed update. So private, void, fixed update which runs every time there's a physics update instead of every time there's a screen redraw. Then that's when I'll move the car. So first thing I'll do is I will read from the user input dot get access um, vertical for the car moving you know forward and back and then I'll read from the user input dot get access horizontal and, and vertical and horizontal are in the input manager. That's where they're defined. So these, this means I could use the WASD keys or the arrow keys, or I could use um, the left analog of a gamepad. Okay, analog of a gamepad to do these movement controls here for the vertical and horizontal. Then what I do with those is I'm going to apply forces. So the first force I'm going to use is the vertical, which the values on these guys are from a minus one to a zero to a one. That's what the values are that come back from these get access functions. That's why I had to have move speed and turn speed so I could like increase the values that get back from the input. So RB dot add relative force. And um, it's relative force, meaning depending on which way my car is pointing, that's relative force compared to add force, which is, you know, the direction in the world. So RB, from a rigid body, add relative force. I'm going to go in the vector 3 dot forward direction, always, right, times vert, which means if vert is minus, I'll go backward. But if it's positive, I'll go forward. And then let's increase that value, because these are only from minus 1 to 1, so I'll multiply it by my move speed. And I could tell it the force mode to use. Let's try today to use force mode acceleration, right, because it's a car. I kind of want it to accelerate. So that'll move my car forward and backward, kind of. Now I want to turn my car too, and I'm going to try to use physics to turn the car. And turning is, in the physics engine here, it's called torque. So there it is, add relative torque. It's the second one there. And when I turn on um, the car, it's going to be coming out of like the top of the car, the y-axis, to turn you know, left and right. So vector 3 dot up is going to be the axis I'm turning on. And I'll use the horizontal input, which again, that's from you know, minus 1 to 1, turning left or right. But then to change the speed of that, I'll just use the turn speed. And the force mode here, um, I'm going to try using a velocity change, which doesn't. So both the acceleration and the velocity change, they ignore the mass of my car. OK. So this should move the car. Let me see. I'm going to save it and try it out. Um, let me position the camera a more suitable position. So I'll select the camera and press Control shift f and there, now the camera is looking at my car. So when I press play, I can actually see my car. So let's try out the script that I put for the car and see if it moves up accordingly. OK, so I'm going to press play. And then I'm going to press the controls once the game starts. Oh, and I went through the ground. Yeah, OK, so the model I just got from the asset store, there's no colliders on it. Um, but everything is flat. So I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to have my car. I'm going to constrain uh, movement on the y-axis so the car doesn't fall down through the ground. Now let me try it again. Press play. Of course, if I if I wanted to put colliders on there, whoa, my car is spinning way out of control. Nick, it's like ice capades. All right, let me do another trick here. So for the spinning to stop, let me just give it some drag. Um, I'm going to try giving it a lot of drag because basically I don't want it to really just go spinning out of control. And then also for the physics, when I accelerate, I want it to decelerate. So I'll give it a one for some you know, friction drag so it could stop rolling if I'm not pressing the gas pedal. Let's see if those numbers work. And I press play. And OK, that's a little better. And that's a little better. And you know I'm going through things because there's no, um, there's no colliders right now. So I could just drive through everything. Right? But I'm getting the feeling of driving through the city. Now the only other thing I want is for the camera basically to follow my car. So when you think about it, if the camera follows the car, I kind of want the camera 
uh, where is it right now? It's right over here. I want it to be behind the car and slightly back and slightly up, and I want the camera to look down at the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give my car a reference point for the camera to position itself behind. So I'll select the car, and I'm not going to select the mesh part of the car. I'll select the top level here, and I'm going to um, right-click, and I'm going to add an empty game object okay, to my car. And I'll call this um, my move to position. This is the position I want the camera to move to. And I'm going to also give it a little gizmo to, to be able to make it visible. Make sure gizmos is on. And then there'll be a little purple dot for the move to. See, there it is. And this purple dot, I could imagine, that's where I want my camera to be. So the camera's a little bit further back or whatever. So let's say the camera goes back by um, minus 10 and up by uh, 5. How about that? See, so the camera will follow my card just about that close. I could always move this dot and have the camera come to a position wherever the dot is. But right now I'm putting it right there, straight behind the car. Yeah, that's great. So I put this dot here. But the camera's not going to do anything unless I make a script for the camera to follow that dot. So let's make another script. And this script will call camera follow 3D because I'm basically going to follow this dot in 3D and look at the car. And on my camera script, what I want to have is something else. Let's see what it's going to need. So let me put my camera script on the camera. Come on now. And then on that camera script, let's see what we have to add to it. I'll just cut this out. And those are great. They're not being used. I'll cut them out. And let's see. First thing is, what am I going to have to show in the inspector? So let me show a transform of what I'm going to look at, what I want the camera to look at. And uh, then I'm going to set another transform, public transform, of where I want the camera to move to which that's going to be that little purple gizmo that we added to my car, purple empty game object. And then so that the camera moves smoothly and it doesn't just like lock on, let's, let's make move speeds, like a speed for the camera to look, a look speed. And by default, let me just say it is 45. The number is bigger with the look speed because, you know, we're talking about angles there. And then public, oops, sorry about that, enter. Public float um, and a move speed versus look speed, a move speed, and we'll say that it'll move at a speed of 1.8. Just, you know, just guessing some numbers. You could always play around with them in the inspector if you want. And um, for the car, we were doing the updates in fixed update because we were using physics to move the car. With the camera, we want the camera to update after everything in the scene has drawn itself and everything like that. So let's use the late update function, private void late update, which is part of mono behavior. Okay, there you go. Turned yellow. Part of model behavior. Update is called every frame if the behavior is enabled. But when you look it up in the documentation, this happens after update and fixed update. After they're all done, then you call late update. So I don't want the camera to jitter, so I'm doing it all this stuff for moving the camera to late update. So um, there's two things I want to do with the camera. First thing is wherever the camera is rotated looking at, I want it to slowly kind of turn and look at the car. You know? So um, what I need to know is what is the rotation that the camera has to actually get to, what is the angle that it has to turn to to look to actually be seeing the car. So let's use the quaternions to figure that out. And this will be my rotate target for the um, camera. And it'll always be changing because, you know, the car will always be moving. So the look rotation, we got to figure that out. That's a function. We're going to give it, what's the first value it wants? It wants, um, okay, I can give it two things. I'm going to give it not this forward and upwards, but... I need a vector 3 forward. Which way is it going to look? So that would be the look, my look at transform, my look at position, minus my current camera position, you know, to figure out, like, where do I have to turn, okay? So the look at position minus my camera's position, that'll give me the target where I have to rotate toward to look at this uh, look at thing. And now to actually move the camera's rotation, transform.rotation, I'll use the quaternion class again, and there's a function called rotate towards, and this one, I could use this dot, the target, you know, where I'm coming from is where the camera is currently pointing, transform dot rotation, toward the ro the new target that I want it to rotate to, the rotate target, and then I could say how fast, you know, it's going to be changing, so that's where I'm going to use my look speed, and I just kind of um, time delta time that, time dot delta time. So it doesn't, so it goes the same speed on every computer, okay? 
So that one's a little bit longer than the screen here was. Let me just make this a little bit longer so you can see it all. I can't get it to fit in there. Okay, so that takes care of my camera turning toward the target. Let's have the camera now move to keep up with the car. So let's do this dot transform dot position of the camera is going to equal vector three dot lerp. Lerp from lerp is like a way to slowly interpolate between two values. So the first value is where the camera is again, the position of the camera to the move to the target that we're going to specify in the, in the inspector window. Transform dot position. And you know we'll control how fast that happens with move speed times. Time delta time. Boom. All right, so let's see now if we get the camera to follow the car and we're going to be done if this works. Pretty much for a simple play around thing today. So here we have the camera script. What do we want the camera to look at? We want it to look at the car. Where do we want the camera to move to? We want the camera to move to that purple dot. And then here are the default values for look speed and move speed. And the car, let's just check that over again, has its move speed and turn speed. All right, so let's see if this actually works. Let me do a save. And now let's see if the camera kind of follows the car. So when I press play, it should get into position behind the car. Ah, I did that, cool. Now's where you can see if we're too close or too far. So of course, I think the car's a little too big. Of course, when the car's driving around, um, uh, there you go. Let's see if I could have the car be a little bit smaller. I feel like it's too big. So I'm gonna go back to the Chevy Blue thing here, scale, and just scale down the whole thing a little bit more. That feels better. And now let me just see if it's, yep, it's still on the road. Okay, Chevy Blue, there you go, file save. And I think I'm gonna make the car move a little faster. <laughs> 25. No, that's what it was. Make it 30. Let's try that. And press play. Let's see if the car has a little bit more speed. And then uh, there you go. All right, so there you go. I'm driving the car. Now I'm getting to see what this little voxel city looks like in first person. Oh, cool. I get to see the side of the car. And you see how the camera doesn't jerk very hard. It kind of just tries to follow the car nicely. And the turning, if like, say, if my car was turning too fast, you know, like at a, you know, it just turned too much. When I press the turn wheel, I can make it a, a little easier for the controls for that by decreasing the turn speed. But I like this. I'm just using my keyboard here. Uh, boom! I would have crashed into that. So there you go. That's my um example. Have fun. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.